Well, despite the fact all the headlines tomorrow will be about the fallen champions, Liverpool, and how they came unstuck in a six-minute period, how much credit do Leicester City deserve after that then, Michael? I think what Leicester are a very dangerous side. I, I, you know, Liverpool dominated the game for most parts there. Um, if Leicester want to go and try to win a league again or something like that, then they'll have to brush up on you know, controlling the game and controlling possession and things like that. But against anybody, they are dangerous. They've got dangerous players. They're quick on the break. They can defend deep. Uh, they've got good full-backs. So they've got a lot of good individual players. Um, and they're a test for anyone. We said before the game, you know, in terms of Liverpool centre-halves, yeah. you know, is, it was Manchester City a harder game? I thought Leicester is, a, is the hardest game for a centre-half. Centre you know, you've got, you're getting challenged in so many different ways. So, yeah, they're, a, they're a, a tough match for anybody. And um, even though Liverpool played probably the better today, Leicester, they just look so much more dangerous when they go forward at the moment. They are dangerous when you get in a position where you, you start turning the ball over in the midfield to people like Tielemans, Madison, with the pace of Barnes and Vardy up front. Mm. If, you're not, if you're not tight and you're, you, you drop off like Liverpool didn't used to do, the Liverpool were on it for the... Mm. For the whole game, that's why they were great. And obviously they had their, their main guys playing all the time, midfield with um, Anderson and Fabinho in there. And then they got Van Dijk at the back. So it's a do totally different kind of midfield where they didn't lose the ball like they did, especially today, Mo Salah. But when you lose the ball to a Leicester team in that particular area, you're in trouble. Mm. Because that's Leicester have always been devastating as long as they've got Jamie Vardy playing, if you get them into that scenario. And they always, like Michael say, are going to be a dangerous team to play, no matter how poorly they've played in the game. Do you know, today I thought was the, one of the best examples, and we spoke about it before the game. Mm. You, Liverpool, can play, Liverpool haven't changed the way they're playing, but Liverpool could always rely on Gomez and Van Dijk, no matter what, to go 2v2 with anybody, don't care how, how fast they are. Mm. And today just shows that, you, yeah, you can patch it up, you can tell your full-backs to stay back a little bit, you can put more protection, you can do all these things to sort of... To, to minimise the stress that you're going to cause on your back too. But that's not Liverpool's way, and I don't think it should be the way, and they might have to go through pain along the way, mm. but to keep playing the way they know how. The problem is, when a turnover, as Wrighty just said, comes in the midfield, all of a sudden now, the centre-half, whoever they might be, they're not Gomez, they're not Van Dijk. They haven't got the pace, they haven't got the strength or anything. So it's, it's a real difficult one now because they're, they're playing the same way, mm. but they just haven't got the unbelievable players at the back there to mop it up. I wonder what the demeanour of Jurgen Klopp will be in that dressing room at the King Power Stadium. Uh, let's get some personal reaction from the Liverpool camp now. Let's hear from Andy Robertson. Andy, that's a, that's a big blow, isn't it? A big turnaround in fortune as well. Yeah, um, you know, a huge, a huge blow, you can say that. Um, you know, I thought for large parts of the game we were really good. Um, you know, dominant when you come here against a really good Leicester team. You know, not many teams do that. And then, you know, that, you know, the thing I think we're struggling with is that's not us out there. You know, one setback, is, you know, we've been so good at that. Setbacks, we've bounced back and, um, you know, we stay in the game. And But that setback, we just opened completely up and we played right into Leicester's hands with Barnes and Vardy and um, the pace and the counter-attack. That's... You know, we were 2-1 down, I think, with 15 minutes to go, so stay in the game, you know, go 2-1 and try and get a chance. But we just opened completely up, Des, and um, when that happens against a really good Leicester team, you're going to get punished. So for 75 minutes, we were really good, but that doesn't win you football matches and we're on the wrong end of it today. Is it, it's, not, it's not just confidence, is it? It's, it's about just ironing out the errors in the game. Yeah, of course, look, confidence, I thought, you know, <laughs> for large parts of the game we played... With a lot of confidence, you know, we kept the ball really well, you know, we started really well, created a couple of chances, good few corners in the first 10 minutes. Um, started exactly the way you wanted, you know, kept the ball really well. Um, and then, you know, I just don't know what happened the last 10, 15, that can't happen. In a big game like this, it simply can't happen. And it did, unfortunately, for us. And, and we really need to look at that because we've got a lot of big games coming up. Every game's massive for us now. And, um, you know, when when you open up like that, you know, most teams will punish you and, you know, we really need to put, put an end to it. Well, I think his body language says it all. He's always so honest as Andy Robertson, basically echoing what you've both said. That's not Liverpool out there that we saw today. 
No, and when your confidence is fragile, when you're not going on a good run, that's what happens. You can still play well, and Liverpool came out and they played brilliant. That's as good as I've seen Liverpool for, for a long time. I mean, I'm thinking Burnley's and Southampton's and some of the rubbish that we've been watching in recent weeks. It's just been a pale shadow of Liverpool. But that's the problem then. You get performances, all of a sudden, one thing that goes against you and it cracks your confidence. Mm. So I think... Liverpool have got a bit of work to, to get that back. They're putting in decent performances, though, now. I mean, Jurgen Klopp came out after the City game and said, "That's we played really well. He was well. positive. Not, he was very positive. Yeah. And I think he'll be even more so after today. But it just shows you when things aren't going right, cracks yeah. appear and they get bigger. Got the correct decisions yeah. in sequence there. Well, if that was VAR playing a part, what about the Liverpool's defence there? Should that have been caught out so easily? It's, it's a horrible place to defend a, a cross from, yeah. uh, especially Madison. People all straight away look at the goalkeeper and, and, and it, listen, I've never played goalkeeper, but I would like to think I understand them. Um, if I was a goalkeeper in that situation, I'd just have, you'd just have to go with the flight of the ball and, and just get in line. If someone gets there in front of you, nips it in and, and knocks into the near post, fine. But I, I just think doing nothing and just almost anticipating a, a shot from two yards out as we see the offside there, it's, it's very difficult for us to see without sort of yeah. really zooming in. But when you just look at the goalkeeper here, he's waiting for a touch, isn't he? He's waiting and waiting, and then when it goes past him, he I just think you've got to get in line with wherever that ball is going and just assume that no one's going to get a touch. So it's so tough. It is the, tough. But... The line, the line that has, you know, and, and the, how deep it is, and then the quality of the ball in. Hmm. That's all the thing. That, everything yeah. what Madison's done there and what Leicester have done there is exactly what you'd want to do on the training pitch. The only thing I would say, righty, is that the ball's coming quite low and mm. flat, hasn't it? Of course, yeah. So you should, it should never have got to there. There should be someone at the front, yeah, front maybe, screen. Yeah. And, yeah. So, OK, if one gets whipped in the air, top corner, you can't do much about mm. it. But one coming flat, then it should have been uh, screened off. OK, so if Alisson wasn't at fault, then, for that goal... What about for goal number two? Well, I think this is a, a communication problem. Again, talking about the, the youngster who's come in, and you'd like to think that the distance this is coming from, the goalkeeper by now would have shouted or something, but obviously that's not happened. Mm. And you look at it at the moment with, uh, with Alisson, and again, it's the kind of mistake that is it's a glaring mistake. It's a poor error of judgment. It's, you know, you've got a Quebec here, you know, he's just looking at the ball, he's looking to clear it. He obviously hasn't had a shot because he's turned round and all of a sudden his goalkeeper's on top of him. He's yeah. not tried to come out of the challenge because he's given the goalkeeper space to clear it. He's literally going straight for it. So I don't think he's got any communication from the goalkeeper there. And he's just going through one of those spells, like I say, as a goalkeeper, where... You've got to put him under pressure and put him in... ..in terms of the Leicester players. He would have got there first and cleared it, mm. but... <laughs> You know, when, the, when a defender's watching the ball coming over and over and over, it's such a difficult... You can never take your, the, your eye off the ball. So, as he's watching it, he just can't see what's happening there. And, mm. and you've just got to leave. He's in control. He either needs a shout or just leave him to it. He was almost in control, even though it was a tough ball. Now, I fully understand what you're saying in terms of the time difference from the start of his Liverpool career and what they've gone on to achieve, but now that's three goals in two games. At what point does that then become a problem, right, Ian? Well, to be honest, it's, you're not going to... When you've, you've just um, catalogued all the unbelievable things he's done, so yeah. you're not going in, in, to, in, in three games, um, or, you know, with, with mistakes what he's made, you're going to start thinking about, oh, new goalkeepers or dropping... But no, like, no, no, but confidence issues. Well. No, confidence is something that... For, well, like you see, he's, he's been so good that um, we haven't seen him do this. So what we're going to see now is him to continue to play mm. and see if he continues to make these rash decisions or he's going to go back to being as brilliant and as consistent as he was. But there's no way, as, if, as me, me being a manager, it, as far as I'm concerned, I say to him, listen, I'm, you're going through one of those spells. I'm just going to stick, you're going to stick with him. He'll mm. get through it because he's a brilliant keeper. Uh, Leicester's third goal uh, scored by Harvey Barnes. What about the way... That one of the most, um, most amazing goalkeepers in the world. Stick by him, build his confidence back up, even through thick and thin, mate you're our number one, mm. because you'll get paid back in spades in the future. There I say, you might have to answer it now. Let's hear from the Liverpool boss, Jürgen Klopp. Jürgen, there was a massive turnaround in that game. What happened? How do you, how do you explain that? Oh, we conceded the goal, it was a, which is a, a really tough one to take. I know we discussed uh, about, a lot about VR, but it was, I think we all agreed, it was a turning point in the game. Um, and even when we... Um, thought I saw it now a couple of times of um, the goal, and the moment when they when they stop, 
the situation where you look who is offside, who is not offside, blah, blah, blah. He didn't even touch the ball yet. So that means that it's still a, a, a individual decision of somebody who makes the, the yeah, in the end, who says it was offside or not offside. And that's really hard because um, for me it looks like a clear offside in that moment because the, he has to touch the ball. <laughs> that's the moment when offside is yes or no. And when I saw it now and when Bobby's foot should obviously be a little bit closer than whatever they throw in there. Um, yeah, that's it. It was a turning point that the second goal is a misunderstanding, which we spoke about before. That we said we need to get used to each other. So we, we, was, we were used to each other over the whole, of, yeah, until I don't know when the, when the goal happened, 75 minutes or so. And the book was a really, really good football game. Um, yes, they are a, a one. Were one position ahead of us, um, maybe now more. I don't know, but. Um, on the pitch, that was not that was not obvious. We were the clear dominant side. We were we played football. We played, we played the football we wanted to play. We avoided their counter attacks. We did pretty much everything what you have to do. We scored a really nice goal. Had more chances, but that's normal. That we have we have just to work hard in our situation to get more chances and maybe score more goals. But the game was really good, and then you concede these two goals. Um, and. Yeah, the third one, then obviously lose the ball too easy and um, one pass and they are, they are, they are done. That's, that's something I don't like because we were obviously much too open in that moment. That's, that's the, the really, the, 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 I told the boys already, that's not OK. But um, that's the situation we are in and yeah. These are, these are tough times for you, aren't they? Because you're having to, some players such as the goalkeeper have damaged confidence and, and it, as you said, new players fitting into a system. It's, all, yeah. all happening at so tough times is no problem. Yes, you're right. Tough, but you, 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 we, we, the only thing we can do, we, look now, we, you saw we tried everything. It's not that we didn't try and want, and we didn't. That we, um, um, we were confident again. Ali was confident. He played a super game. He had super saves. Um, so that's all fine. But in that moment, yeah, maybe because of last week, who knows? He comes out. I didn't hear him shouting. I'm there. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure he said something or not. Ozan doesn't know in that moment, um, doesn't know him long enough. Is he coming? Is he not coming? And that's how it leads to the second goal. Um, yeah, and then that's it. The turning point was the first goal, I have to say. That's not okay that we, that is a turning point in the game, but in our situation, not completely unlikely. But that's the point we take um, as criticism for ourselves, that it changed too much with this one goal. Even when the goal was really tricky, penalty, no penalty. I, I think it was not even a foul because Barnes jumps in the situation, but in a free kick, they scored, a, they scored a goal, no goal, yes goal, and on. So we didn't, we didn't react well on that. I take that. But um, around that, we, we, we really played top football in the end against a really strong side like Leicester. They were lucky to win today. They know it probably in the end. They, they finished the game. That's fine. They deserve the three points. We know that. But um, yeah, we have to deal with our own situation. Thank you. It's five defeats in the last eight Premier League games. As many. Liverpool's previous 93 in England's top flight. That is some turnaround. <laughs> you both spoke about how defeat today would be the final nail of their title defence. Is that it now for you in the title for Liverpool? Oh, Liverpool have got to, got to be looking over their shoulder now instead of looking up to the top. No question about it. Top four will be a, a, a big achievement now because there's certainly plenty of teams snapping at the heels. Leicester go further ahead of them after today. Manchester United are playing well at the moment. Mm. And they look over their shoulder and they've got the likes of West Ham and Chelsea and Tottenham and, and Everton have got a lot of games in hand. So all of a sudden, top four is, uh, is under threat. It's a good point, that. The next time they play, which is the uh, Merseyside derby, uh, at home to Everton, Liverpool could find themselves in seventh place. Mm -hmm. Ian, that's, that's quite unthinkable almost. It's From unthinkable. seven weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, but we're talking about a Liverpool side that have had a lot of misfortune. And a lot of people have had a lot of misfortune in this time, but it's affected Liverpool, for me, in a, in a, in a massive way. And we can see that in the way they're playing. Um, yes, the, the mentality is still brilliant. They're still trying to do the right things. But when you can smell this kind of weakness in a team, because there is a weakness in a team, like, Le like Le Leicester didn't have to do too much today to, to beat Liverpool. Liverpool were brilliant, and then they made a couple of mistakes and were totally punished. Everton will be hoping the same. They'll try and stay in the game with them. They know that Liverpool can play that way, but you can still get at them. And mm. so they're a team that people want to play against. When you talked about how many they've not lost in like 90, 93 or something, you said to what they've done now, 
that's, that's because of how magnificent they've been, but it's taken its toll on Liverpool. And it's going to take... It's, now they're going to have to... We're really going to find out what Liverpool are about to come out of this. Yeah. And they can't dwell on this result or recent results, Michael. The Champions League now takes on added significance, doesn't it, in a few days' time? Well, it's the only chance of silverware and, and, a, and a season without silverware. When you've got a team like this, and right, he's played in, in great teams, you need to capitalise on having great players, you know, quick, get as many trophies as you can in the bag because every team has their phase. You know, mm. it'll be, you know, next time it'll be someone else, Manchester City, having a great time at the moment, but it might be a Chelsea, it might be a Manchester United, the re-emerge. So, while you've got this great set of players, they need to win as much as they can. And, of course, that's their last opportunity now. Ch top four is key uh, in the Premier League and they've got to try to go and win the Champions League. Otherwise, it's obviously going to be a, a poor year for them. We shouldn't forget, Leicester moved up to second as a result of that incredible win today.